everybody welcome in to streets of rogue dev interview i'm shanice i'm your social media manager here at tiny build i am here with george hi guys what's up everyone um i'm senior community manager at tiny build and we are joined by the one the only matt dabrowski uh matt what's going on man it's nice to see you uh hey how's it going um yeah 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 so um what's going on uh yeah it's a hectic hectic morning over over here my i was uh, just uh telling these guys um the the my son just bit off the end of a crown and now he's like Ooh. it looks like he's like bleeding profusely from the mouth but not really though he's just he's just um he just just a bunch of <laughs> red crown um so um but he's okay. Yeah, it's it's a non toxic crown. Everything's everything's all good. Just okay. uh, we're gonna need a new toothbrush after this. I think. Okay, I was okay. about to ask if you know if everything is all right, but yeah, I'll, yeah. Just, I'll, <laughs> set, I'll set a reminder. Other than that, all right. New toothbrush. Yeah. Got it. <laughs> I'll set a reminder yeah. after this call. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right, folks. How about we talk about Streets of Rock Two? We announced it last year, to October two thousand twenty two. Um, everyone is so excited this year about it, and. It's just going to be a blast, and you know I'm I can't wait to talk about uh, mm -hmm. that with you, Matt. Uh, so yeah, before we get started, I was actually uh, going to ask you. I want to know, like, what was your initial reaction when you discovered that your game is going to be featured on uh, the opening night live at Gamescom this year? Um, I mean, th th it's well, so because I'm like really old and out of the loop. The first thing I, when I think of when I think of Gamescom is like you ever, you ever heard of the Gamecom? It's like a video game system from 1997. Mm -hmm. It's like a portable system. Yeah. It's from Tiger. It was, it was very terrible. Oh. And I was like, what does my game have to do with this? I remember but, um, Tiger. <laughs> yeah yeah but then i then i looked up and i was like oh that's actually like a huge deal um so yeah yeah very very big deal uh i'm really 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 yeah i was really stoked about that actually it's um, an amazing achievement 100 percent. yeah yeah no, i think it, at this point gamescom is uh, the biggest uh game exhibition in the world it's not only yeah. europe mm -hmm. so i mean it's it's a big deal uh, it's also for us as a publisher it's a big deal you know i've been Gamescom twice, and then just you know the scale of it is just absolutely unbelievable. Mm -hmm. 100%. Yeah, no, I mean, I I, I was always there. Yeah, so, somebody from Tiny Build asked me to to maybe maybe go there, and I was thinking maybe I'd be able to, but as it turns out, my passport is expired, and uh, oh no, also I mean, so, yeah, uh, it would it would have just taken too much time. Plus, well, there's a, there's a new baby around the house as well, so it's like yeah, it's too much going on right now. Not to yeah, mention I got to like. This darn game, you know. Yeah, hundred percent. Um, speaking of, how much has your playtime decreased now that you're a full time dad? Um, well, let's see. I, I've, actually, I've actually been a, well, I've been a full time dad, yeah, since uh, tw early 2020, since like right before the pandemic. And mm -hmm. yeah, my my daughter was born about a month and a half ago. Uh, how much has my playtime decreased? I don't have time to do anything other than like working on this game and child rearing. That's it. Like, uh, I mean. <laughs> I, if, if I play games, it's for research, you know, like I, I, I have played games, you know, for research and I'm, it's not even like an air quotes for research thing. Like, like I, I can't afford to play anything for more than like 15 hours or so, uh, it, you know, if, if it's like a really big game, maybe. Uh, but but like, yeah, I mean, most most days I'm just up until like 2 a.m. Yeah. Uh, just 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 working on the game. And when I'm not doing that, I'm like dealing with child things. So, yeah, sadly, uh, I have a lot of blind spots uh, recently as far as, like, my, my gaming goes. Uh, I'm not going to get to play, like, Starfield when it comes out. Everybody's talking about Baldur's Gate 3 now. Yeah. Not going to get to play that for a while, you know. It sucks, but uh, it is what it is. Yeah, it's a bummer. So, any, any games, any recent games that you have enjoyed recently? Um, yeah, I mean, I played I played V Rising somewhat recently uh, because you know that's sort of in the same general vein as, as Streets of Rogue Two in that like, I mean, there there I mean, there's a lot of you know huge differences between these two things, but you know it's sort of it's an open world, you know, there's some crafting and in, in Streets of Rogue Two some light survival kind of elements. Um, um, and you know, obviously, the online multiplayer aspect of it, also. Uh, so, you know, I figured that might be one to one to check out. And uh, yeah, I, I enjoyed that one that one quite a bit. Um, uh, just you know, it has a really nice nice loop to it. 
you know, it's it's it, it's addictive. Uh, it, one of the things I really like about it is it lets you fiddle with a lot of settings mm-hmm. um, to make the game sort of easier right. on yourself. Like so, you, so it's not as much of a grind, especially yeah. in single player mode. Like um, that, that's something I'm going to be adding to Streets of Rogue Two. Actually, like there's a ton of uh, settings that you'll just be able to like mess with and make the game like way easier, or way harder for yourself. It's like it's sort of an excuse. I guess that you you could say it's kind of an excuse to not balance the game. Uh, I, I'm going to try to balance the game. But there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of uh, you know little complexities and I mean the first game, frankly, was not a super balanced game I, w- I would say um, you know I and mean, there's so many character classes and ways to play it that obviously some of them are going to be like way easier than others, um, and that's probably going to hold through to, to the sequel especially given there there's a massive increase in scope here, um, but uh, yeah I'll be able to basically let people. Uh, you know, adjust things uh, to to their liking. Um, uh, so yeah, that, that was actually an idea uh, that was that I had gotten just looking at the 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 menus in V Rising. It was just mm. like, wow, they're really like letting people go for it in in terms of like what they, uh, uh, you know, what what they're allowing people to adjust. And yeah. uh, I think that's so really the great game, with the game. I like I love that oh, because I think a lot of games nowadays are so linear in the way of your play style that you know you have your notorious games with like really really easy or really really difficult so it's great to be able to have that you know those adjusting bars so that way it adjusts to your play style because some people might not want to play this game because it's notoriously too difficult or it's notoriously too easy so it's good to be able to appeal to not only that audience but a wider range as well yeah totally yeah. guys i mean um I think, Matt, you mentioned uh, that Streets of Rock 2, oh, sorry, Streets of Rock 1, the first game, is not like uh, is not uh, a perfectly balanced game, and you can, you know, play, uh, you can uh, sort of like play in any way you want, but that's the thing, you know, right? Because I think, uh, like, what people like about the first game is that there's just so many ways to do things, and um, I think, um, do you know about uh, tabletop games where you can... Uh, like playing any way you want it's called rules light so i think some some rules of the outlets light. even called uh Street rock one uh, a rules light rpg like a video game you know you know video i've game. never heard that term before ever i don't think i'm gonna write that down though and google that rules light yeah it's rules light so we, we, it means okay. basically that your game is so open like you can you can uh when you play a tabletop game you can uh, actually there's freedom, right? You can mm-hmm. say things, you can write things down. Everyone is going to, you know, just challenge you and ask questions. So, uh, a lot of people feel like uh, Three Rock One has that feel to it, you know, the freedom. Mm. So yeah, yeah, no, yeah, yeah, and, and that's yeah, that sounds about right. I mean, that's really what I'm going for. Uh, you know, it's like uh, I, I mean, balance, balance comes secondary to like, you know, if if I. If I think of like a cool thing that that um, you know like okay well let's give you an example like okay when I was when I was thinking about like trailer shots that we had to do uh, you know for the, the Streets of Rogue trailer mm-hmm. um, you know one of the things I, I did, just came to mind was like oh what if you could like ride this ride a bear um, <laughs> and I mean that wasn't even something I was thinking about implementing but then I realized oh that actually fits in pretty well uh, because you know you have you have uh, you're already you're already gonna have these animals in the game. You want to be able to interact with them in in different ways. Uh, you know, not just like killing them. I mean, th- this is the whole thing about Streets of Rogue. Is like everything should have, you know, multiple purposes. Like street animals are not just there as like fodder for your 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 shotgun or whatever, and to get some meat or whatever. Like they're there's they're they should have. You should be able to, uh, you know, befriend them if if that's if that's you know the route you want to go. Uh, um, you should be able to, you know, maybe, maybe even keep them as pets or something like that. Uh, I haven't, imp- to, to be clear, I have not implemented this system, uh, fully yet, but you know, it, it's the kind of thing that, it's the kind of thing that like seems feasible. Right. Mm-hmm. So, um, um, so yeah, I mean, I was, I was, just, I was just like, oh, that, that'd be cool. I'll, I'll just, I'll just put it in and now I have to actually implement it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, that, that's how a lot of things work. It's like I'll th- come up with a cool idea, put it in, and, I, and then it's like we'll save the balance for later. But like, we'll figure that out. Like you know, I'm not I'm not like worry overly worried about like how this is going to affect other aspects of the game. Just if it seems 
If it seems cool, you know, we'll worry Let's about that stuff later. So, yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> I like that mentality. That's I like generally it. how I develop. I like that creativity. I think it's really fun that you're able to just go, hey, this would be cool. I'll do it. I'll worry about the logistics later. Yeah. Let's just do it. <laughs> yeah, this is like this is like feature creep the game constantly. I mean, but you know, it, it's it's okay. I mean, like it's it's a problem, but it's also not because it's kind of just the game. It's just like feature mm. creep, just keep just continuing. I yeah, don't know. I like it. Uh, it, it I, I think it it's worked so far. So uh, <laughs> people 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 seem to appreciate you know that, that these things exist. So. Yeah, I mean, if it's if it's not completely balanced, that's that's fine. I, I I haven't had a lot of you know major complaints about that sort of thing. It's I people just don't seem to to care ultimately. <laughs> Do you realize, Matt, that players are going to start asking you, "Okay, Matt, are we going to have pets in the game <laughs> after you?" Yeah. <laughs> after you know you mentioned beds? that. Yep. So pets? you said beds. Pets. No, no, sorry. Oh, oh pets. Oh, pets. Oh, sorry, pets. Um. Yeah. Again, like yeah, it's like. Pets already in the like, game. Pets. I don't, I don't like to ever make promises about what's what's in the game. It's just like I'm speculating on what what could potentially be. And, you know, it's like, yeah, pets are something that would be certainly very feasible. And I think people would very much appreciate uh, that being there. Um, you know, I, the me mechanically, I don't know how that would work exactly yet. You know, maybe they can't be killed or maybe they maybe they, they can just be knocked out or something like that. Or maybe maybe bullets. Don't even touch them. Maybe you have a pet that just doesn't even help you in combat. He just kind of like sticks by your side. And maybe there's maybe there's different ways that that pets can. Maybe you have the option of choosing what kind of what kind of pet you want, like a pet that actually helps you or a pet that's mm. just kind of like there. I don't know. I mean, there's a lot of ways it could potentially work. Uh, I, I don't know if if anybody has any any ideas on that. You know, feel free to. Send them my way. Um, again, I do have blind spots because I haven't. I, like I said, I don't have time to play a ton of games. So I'm sure there's there's games that do this these systems really really well that I just haven't played. So um, yeah, always, this is why I'm always open to suggestion. You know. Yeah, um, your community is always suggesting new ideas. But what has been your favorite so far? Out all of the suggestions I... that you've received for oh my Streets God. of Rogue One, two. What's been your favorite? I, I couldn't possibly like. I mean, I, I couldn't possibly like give you like, like an exact answer on what's been my total favorite. You know, like so. Um, for those who don't know, we have like we had this community contest uh, going on uh, for for most of July, where um, uh, people people could basically suggest ideas for different aspects of the game. And there's the potential to, uh, it, you know, we're going to have winners for a bunch of different categories and people ca and the winners will get those ideas actually implemented into the game. Mm -hmm. um, so, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm actually going through those right now. There's thousands of responses. I'm uh, about two thirds of the way through right now. And I have a, an ongoing list of, of stuff just in an, in an Excel doc here. I mean, I could just take a look at this and like that you know like okay like somebody just suggested earthworm awakening there's an underground beast that is attracted to noise roams the land attacking anything that gives off noise or on the bare ground so kind of like i guess the sandworms in in dune or something mm -hmm. um they, they can't attack building interior like this is i mean right there that's a cool one um yeah I, again, like i haven't thought too much about like whether this is actually like feasible or, or whatever but i, I put down anything cool i think ideas, it's cool right so, yeah yeah, yeah. Great ideas. um but yeah, as far as the actual, like, I I, I could never pick a, a top one. I, that'd be impossible. <laughs> I don't know. But, I mean, yeah, I, I already have, like, written down, um, you know, hundreds uh, from the, the thousands of ideas that people have suggested. So it's going to be, yeah, it's going to be tough to pick here, really. George it's, worked uh, very closely with that contest with you. Um, and I remember him, you know, mentioning all of these suggestions that were coming through and all these amazing, like, amazing feedback from the community. It was crazy. Yeah, it was just a blast. And, you know, it was so crazy to see so many people, like, suggesting ideas right away. And for two, three weeks, I think, uh, it was just a nonstop, like, avalanche of ideas, you know, each day. I was like, I, w I wake up, I go to, to, you know, to the office, I bring up Steam, and I see, like, hundreds of notifications you know <laughs> on steam and go yeah. okay like 99 percent of those notifications are from streets of rock so it was yeah. just <laughs> mental yeah I speaking know, of ideas, uh 
Yeah, speaking about ideas, can you name one crazy thing that you're uh, implementing in uh, Streets of Rock 2? Let's see. Um, well, I was... When I was thinking about this question, I was actually was good. I was planning to talk about the bear thing, so I'm gonna have to think again on like something else that I'm <laughs> being implemented. Um, what, what, what do we got? Um, crazy thing. Maybe not so much. Maybe not so much crazy as it is just like. Uh, so we're, we have like a whole. So, I mean, this might not be like insane in the sense of like you know explosions and bears and whatnot, but. Um, uh, to to me, like the something I didn't really anticipate uh, going in uh, was that the way the way the world is going to tie together and the way that everything is going to be sort of interconnected. Uh, basically, it's going to be a lot more of a simulation than I initially anticipated it, it being. Like, um, you know, for example, like so, if you go into town and you like murder everybody in town, mm -hmm. like. You're going to stop seeing traffic to that town. Uh, people will stay dead. Um, it's possible that people might move back in. Um, you're going to get a very ne negative reputation. Uh, it's it's. I, I don't know exactly how the factions are going to to, to how how everything is going to work together at this point, but like it, it's it's going to have repercussions in in a way that I didn't really anticipate. Uh, there, there's a lot there's a lot to deal with, but. Um, I enjoy um, that, like consequences to your actions. Yeah. You're being held accountable. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. It sounds like uh, your actions will have long-lasting consequences. So, you know, the whole town's dead is going to be dead for, like forever or for a period of time until it rejuvenates. I, it, you know? I, I'm not. I'm not exactly. Again, I'm not exactly sure how this is going to work yet. Crazy. But it's it's definitely going to have some e e at least you know noticeable ram noticeable repercussions um and just like the way that I, I i implement i started implementing the scheduling system for for npcs uh you know the other like just a couple of months ago uh like a proper scheduling system i had a lot of it done but um you know a lot of it needed to be needed to be completed so like npcs they have like a job and a home and they have to have like leisure venues that they go to as well and so like the way that the cities are built ha has actually sort of changed around this because there have to be like enough jobs for people and enough homes and you know just just places for them to go after work and stuff and it all and like the, these 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 systems like they they really affect how the world uh how the world is built mm -hmm. um and and you know, people have different job shifts. Even uh, some people live together in an apartment together, and and but it all like there, there's a lot more simulation going on than I yeah. than I anticipated. Like in the original game, um, you know, people you just you know when you when you when you saw like you know a, a home or a, or a job or something, it says people stick to doing their one activity, and that's that's all they do basically. I mean, they might run away if you like attack them a bunch, but that's that's about it. Like there's as far as like the the um uh, sort of sort of larger scale stuff goes uh th there's a lot more going on here uh with, yeah. with the npcs um they're actually like living their lives essentially um okay you know and, and yeah, i'm just saying there's a lot there's a lot of there's a lot of systems at play that yeah at play and, and you... ways that you can affect things so would you say that's the biggest challenge that you faced in streets of rogue 2 so far or would you say there's even a bigger one than that yeah, there's actually a bigger one, which is the the <laughs> the, the, the world streaming system. So I mean, like it's it's all one big interconnected world essentially, mm -hmm. where uh, you know there's no loading screens except when you like teleport a far distance or when you go into a dungeon, kind of like a Bethesda game essentially. Mm -hmm. um, and so I mean, like the easy the easy route would have been to just like break up the world into different sections. So like you you go too far to the right. Uh, you go into the forest and it just changes the scene or something like that. But I was like, nope, can't do that. I got to have everything like streaming uh, in everything content. Mm -hmm. um, also, it has to support like a bunch of different players at, at once. So they all have to be like streaming stuff, possibly in different areas of the world, because you don't have to stick together either. So you, you can, you can, you know, you can have one player at one side of the world, another player at the other side of the world. Right. So, um, yeah, I mean, just the well, there's 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 a lot going on there, and uh, it affects like you know every aspect of, you know, it, it's not just a simple matter of like you know take take code from the original game, stick it into this new system, and you're done. You know, every piece of 
everything had to be like you know it it it, it, affect, it affects a, a lot and there's yeah. It, it, I, I don't even know where to begin, like, uh, it, attempting to explain, explain something it's like this. It sounds but, pretty uh, expensive. Yeah, I mean, I mean, it's, it's, yeah, I mean, it's, this is why this is taking up, you know, the bulk of development time, really. I mean, like, it's, like, actual, the actual, as far as the actual, like, gameplay and systems like the, the, like, what I just described with, with the, the interconnected, uh, you know, NPC schedules and stuff like that, like, that's relatively... I wouldn't, I'm not going to say simplistic, but compared with the, the amount of time that I've had to spend, you know, just getting all of the, the kinks of a, a giant streaming open world worked out, mm -hmm. um, it's it's a lot more easy and fun uh, by comparison. So, um, but I'm happy it's all working really pretty well right now, um, it, the, the, my system. So, uh, yeah. It yeah, all but it's, but it sounds long ambitious time. to say the least. It's, it, yeah. It sounds ambitious to say the least. Yeah, um, Matt, I just wanted to ask you really quickly, um, what is one moment that you're most proud of uh, in Streets of Rock 1 and Streets of Rock 2? Uh, let's see, I am, and I guess for the original, just, just uh, um, I mean, getting it getting it out there for the first time, like launch day, I mean, it's been six years since the game launched into early access at this point, um, and... Uh, um, I mean, like that was that was sort of a major like shift in in you know everything because I you know realized you know immediately you know immediately after the first day like oh this is actually like this thing I've been working on you know this is this this actually is connecting with people and and people are enjoying this and you know response is good and um, at that point I was just like okay I can't I can't rest on my laurels now uh, <laughs> I'm just gonna like work super hard and you know keep this thing going and, and that's sort of my been my attitude basically since then so that was like a real shift I mean not not that I was like you know you know working working in a in now that I wasn't working hard prior prior to that like prior to launch right. but it, it's like you know I mean it was just a major turning point in my perceptions of like what this thing could could be yeah. um so that was um yeah I was really happy and, and proud uh uh there and I mean like the the actual launch like out of early access I mean like that was that was just like sort of another I mean there, there weren't any made, like major surprises there that was that was like uh, just another uh, that, that was that was that was a fun day too it came with its own challenges we released the console versions on that day there's a yeah. um uh, but uh, yeah I mean the, the launch in early access that was that was that was sort of the biggest the biggest deal i can recall uh, yeah. uh in the game's history and uh, as far as uh, streets of rogue 2 proud proud moments um the, this is a, this is a bit harder because it's like um well i actually I, I can think of one i mean which is sort of when i got the first uh the first screenshots of the game done and i realized it was actually starting to look like something like look like its own thing and and uh i was like okay oh okay this is what this this is what this is now uh because it, it took, um, you know, I didn't have a full-time artist until like a couple of years into development. Uh, his name is Thomas Feichtmere. Um, uh, he, he's, he's like an amazing artist and he's, he's been, uh, you know, really pivotal in, in shaping the, the, the art direction of this, this thing. Mm -hmm. um, um, and yeah, so I mean, it took about six months uh, with him before we had something that looked like a real, a real game. But uh, that right there, uh, you know, uh, just just getting just getting stuff together and seeing what this could what this could be uh uh yeah that that's that's sort of another pivotal kind of moment a uh, proud moment in the yeah. development just seeing it evolve it? right sorry just seeing the game like evolve like creatively like, actually seeing it like being built and it like all the pieces yeah. all the pieces fitting together right yeah i mean i mean um yeah, because it's it's not really that often that you really get to take a step back and actually like play the thing. Because you're working on all these individual parts of the game all all the time. These these very small, tiny sections, and then occasionally, very occasionally, I get to step back because like it's like oh, I have to show a build to like tiny build or something like that. And you know, you get to step back and actually see the whole thing in action. And, yeah. and oh, yeah, I mean, like another moment I can think of is actually yeah, just like fairly recently, like just you know, all these having all these systems work together, seeing the cars driving around in the game, and you know, they like hit somebody, and the person gets annoyed. You know, fights break out in the street, and just the world feeling alive like that. Uh -huh. um, you know, it, 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 like just just seeing that all like working together. Um, you know, even if, even if it's janky. Uh, it, it's super cool. 
we um yeah i was about to ask you uh about like how difficult is it to reflect to like step take a step back and reflect on what you're actually working on but yeah you could just you know you just covered that um but yeah i mean i think sometimes when you share your like your work in progress for example with us as a publisher it's actually a chance for you to to see the whole picture right mm -hmm. to see it from from yeah. the, from the distance from the from the perspective mm -hmm. right yeah no no yeah yeah definitely i mean like uh, i probably i probably wouldn't have uh you know you know yeah i mean i, I remember i spent like uh yeah when tiny build like requested a build like i i i was like oh, okay actually i have to like take like a week or so and actually like you know get all these systems that i've been working on into like like basically like merge them sort of into the 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 regular game and see them all like actually like bouncing off each other um you know which is something i don't really get to do very often because yeah like i was saying like I'll, i'll be working on just exclusively like car handling or like you know the scheduling system mm -hmm. and you work on these in these tiny little bubbles um but uh but and yeah i mean it's 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 fun to see that all working together and it's also kind of scary you know because you're 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 like yeah, maybe maybe we're gonna run into like horrible uh bugs and performance issues and um um you never you never you never know you never you never know quite what you're gonna get also because the the, the game is just such a like an emergent kind of systems driven thing that you know just sticking stuff together you know these these systems you know I, i remember hearing about like oblivion when oblivion was in development they had the, there was something called the radiant ai system and uh originally um yeah originally like they'd go into a town and and uh they'd find like everyone dead because like some thief had like you know gotten hungry and tried to steal a loaf of bread and then he would like and then so that person would attack him and then like the someone else who was friends with the thief would attack that person and it's just this giant mess uh just that happens escalated. before the player even gets there yeah yeah so they had to like <laughs> tone that way down for the release version So I mean, this is the kind of stuff that I mean, yeah, I, nothing like that's happening right now. I mean, but uh, fortunately, but uh, yeah, but it, it it could with a few with a few tweaks to the variables, it could, you know, mm -hmm. that's that's the thing. So you, you never know quite what you're going to get when, and uh, you might be in for some nasty surprises uh, that that require uh, a lot of a lot of extra work on your part. Yeah. So that was great. What was your um? you know speaking of like oblivion and like we we're talking about v rising as well what is if you can remember because my memory is rubbish um what was your first ever gaming experience so what was the first game that you ever ever you know like picking up and just being like this is amazing like you know having that emotional attachment to that game what was your first real experience you know um I pre I'm pretty sure that the first game I ever played and this is gonna this is gonna sound really like I mean this is the most, probably most common answer of all time but probably Super Mario Brothers I think I was at my friend's house Same in like kindergarten yeah. And, oh yeah and, yeah um, and I mean uh, yeah I mean that's what she had on the TV I remember this very distinctly uh, uh, playing this and I, I don't remember what I did or how well I did uh, or really much of anything about it. But I do remember uh, very clearly, like, you know, the layout of her house and, and just, uh, yeah. you know, seeing that on the TV and um, and it having some kind of impact. Um, I don't think I got a Nintendo for about another another year or so. But uh, um, but yeah, uh, that that's my first yeah. uh, vivid memory of games. Is memories like that, like that that stick with you? Then my first, my dis first distinct um, memory, and this is probably gonna sound really weird, but was like the first, the, it was either the very first Tomb Raider. I distinctly uh, remember yeah. doing that. Final Fantasy VII, like the, the original, that was another one. And I also remember playing on like my Game Boy, like playing Pokemon. Like those are my three distinct memories. I couldn't tell you the timeline. But I remember just being like full on gamer when I was really young, just being like, yeah, this is amazing. So it's what it's those memories that like stick with you and like shape you as a person. I mean, look at us all now. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. Look know. at us go. <laughs> Who would have thought? I think for a lot of people, for a lot of people, like Super Mario is the first. I mean, I, I've asked multiple people about this. And like Super Mario, like the first game, right? Super Mario Brothers is actually for a lot of people like the first memory, including myself. You know, I remember like, 
my mother bought me a, um, a console. It was also like a hacked console, you know, back in Ukraine in the 90s. And yeah, this was the first game that I played. I was blown away, absolutely. Oh, wow. You know, it's funny. I was, I was, you know, I've been introducing my son to to games slowly. You know, he's like three, and like that was one of the first things I I showed him. I just got like an emulator up. I was like, yeah, yeah, this is this is simple enough. You know, he can understand what's going <laughs> on. And, you know, yeah. now he wants me to play Mario three uh, a bunch. Oh, I um, love that. That's so yeah. sweet. <laughs> yeah. Speaking about Street Rock two, like back back to our uh, culprit today. Let's imagine that you are in the game, like the actual character. What would be the first thing that you did in the game? If if Second, so, yeah, I mean, so so right now, like the the actual like opening uh, the game and the like the flow of that that's sort of in in progress right now. So uh, I couldn't really give you a definitive answer on what I would do because you know we're, we're not, it's not completely like worked out at the moment. But I have ideas of what will be what I will eventually do I, I i guess um well so i mean so in the original game my favorite character play, character to play was the investment banker uh he has a drug problem in the original game so he's just constantly having to take drugs i'm not i haven't figured out how that mechanic is going to work in this in this game because i don't want you to just be like i don't know i feel like I mean, this, it could work in a more in, in, in an open. I mean, there's got to be some kind of addiction penalty or whatever. But uh, you know, in the original game, you really had to like you know do drugs like every you know 30 seconds or so, or you start losing health or whatever. Oh my goodness. Um, but but he also starts with like a lot of money, and uh, in this game, there's going to be you know one of the the sort of skill trees has to do with you know money making and and that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. um, so I yeah I think normally with a character what you'll end up doing, uh, you know in true in survival fashion you, know, you will you will want to have like a shelter someplace to sleep or whatever so you know you might want to do the thing of like cutting down trees or whatever but the investment banker could just pay for a hotel room, um, I mean that's also a possibility you probably yeah. have a better I, there's probably <laughs> benefits to doing that like you may you Fair might have enough, a better yeah. sleep. Um, Fair enough. It's better than sleeping in, out in the woods, you know, in a wooden yeah. shackle. <laughs> that's for sure. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing. It's like, I don't want... It's like, yeah, you can sleep in the woods, but I don't know, do you, do you want to? Like, you, Absolutely. There's other yeah. options, too. Yeah. Absolutely. Sometimes you got other <laughs> options. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes you need your retreat. You need to get a, get away from the civilization and, you know, just chill. I, so. I don't think I have the stamina to actually cut down some trees to create yeah. my own base i don't think i have the stamina for that so i think i would definitely go with the hotel room as well probably yeah and i mean the idea the idea is that you know maybe maybe if you don't have the stamina you know there's other options for obtaining materials maybe you just buy the materials yourself or you know there's probably at some point and i, and I, I hate to i see i hate to promise these things too much because like i haven't actually implemented all of this stuff in the game properly just yet but you know there will also be a system planned at least right now i'm not promising but where you can just select from prefabs of buildings mm. and you know pay some money or something to like plunk those down yeah that's that's planned as well, well so if you like really little... hate doing the whole building <laughs> thing <laughs> we'll have like a little thing that pops that up well. so like this did this is this is not a promise disclaimer <laughs> like, yeah yeah <laughs> tbc yeah. It, it, <laughs> it's just something i'm i'm yeah, I'm, it's 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 on my list of it's on my to do list things that that uh, may will get implemented. Maybe not maybe not by the start of early access. We'll see, you know. Uh, yeah. But uh, but th this is the sort of stuff I'm thinking about, though. I like that. I like that a lot. I like I like thinking that you're thinking, you know, forward. Like, oh, how else can I change this and make it even more personal to people having those presets or people that don't necessarily want to build. Yeah. build like a little cabin like some people just be like i just want a house and i want to go you yeah. know so it's good to have those kind of things and and then, and then you know there's also there will there'll probably be like an option like i was saying with the mutators probably like an option where you know resources are like way more plentiful so if you don't want to spend mm -hmm. a lot of time gathering whatever or whatever you just turn down a meter or something like that um like you know that. uh yeah yeah or or you know, maybe, maybe there's less penalties for for sleeping. I, I I'm not sure exactly what or, or not sleeping. I'm not sure not sure how that whole thing is going to work yet. I I don't expect there will be major penalties for not sleeping by default or anything like that. Mm. Uh, it's not like it's 
just just there there will be benefits though. Yeah. So in Streets of Rogue, and I'll have a list here for you. You can fight, sneak, hack, drive, build, farm, quest, craft, and just live. Is there anything you've missed so far? <laughs> well, as many people have, as many people have pointed out, where's fishing? Um, because that's what people expect. There you um, go. The answer is I. By the way, yeah, I, I haven't thought about fishing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, I, I, I'm not exactly sure. Like uh, I, I mentioned somewhere on the forums, like I don't want to have like a mini game because the game already doesn't really have mini games. I just don't want to get into that territory. I'm not sure exactly how it's going to work. You know, it'll probably be there in some fashion at some point. Uh, but I, I don't want it again. Like I want there to be different ways to do it. Like maybe. Like one thing that's been suggested is, you know, maybe you, you see like a spot in the water where there's clearly like some fish. Maybe you go over there with a rod or maybe you throw a bomb over there or something. <laughs> just blow all the fish out of the water. And it can um, be pre-cooked as well. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's a good. I hadn't even thought about that. Yeah, but you're right. Yeah. Shanice would like that. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I, I like that idea. I'm going to have to write that down, actually. It's good I'll make a note of it. Yeah. Toothbrush. Yeah. Pre-cooked fish. We got it. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, no, I like that right there. I like that right there. It's like in, uh, I don't know if you guys have played Rise of the Triad, uh, there was, there's, uh, there, there's, there's, you, you get health back by eating something called priest porridge, and then you just use a rocket launcher to cook it. And, uh, <laughs> and then it becomes like, it becomes like, it gives you like more health that way. Um, Is that that old yeah, uh, first person shooter? Like from the. Yes, but they just came out with a remake. They came out with yeah. a, a remaster the other week from Night Dive. Um, it, it's it's really great. Okay. It's a really great remaster. Um, I love I, I, I love Night Dive. Those guys, uh, you know, they oh, yeah. some um, some old classics like System Shock. By the way, I am yet mm -hmm. to beat System Shock. I have yet to beat it. I bought it back in the day. Yes, back in the day, but before it got, you know, um, pushed back multiple times. And yeah, I still have to finish it. Yeah, um, yeah, no, I, I'm, I'm looking forward to playing the remaster again. No time for anything, but um, yeah, but, uh, the, <laughs> the new one. Yeah, really looking forward to that. So I'm a, I'm so, a big fanboy there. They have like all their stuff. So right. So Matt, you've mentioned like a couple of times uh, that you know you have a lot of ideas, but you're still up in the air with some of them, right? So mm -hmm. I just want to ask you, like, when are you going to be satisfied? Okay, this game is finished. I'm finished with my game. Like. There's nothing more to add, you know. I'm satisfied. Let's ship it. Um, I, I mean, I mean, I don't think any, I don't think any game. Ask any game developer about this. I don't. I think they'll tell you that they're never satisfied with the the finished product, or, or I mean, oh, very yeah. rarely is is something like exactly what they wanted it to be before they had to eventually ship. Um, I, I mean, there's there's satisfaction and there's like complete satisfaction, I guess. Uh. I mean, the, the idea with Streets of Rogue 2 is is that, I mean, this is really like... So, so with, the, the, with the original, um, the structure of the game was, you know, it was, it was very like strict, like roguelike structure where you're going through a bunch of levels. Um, uh, th this is a lot more, this, and of course this is a, an open world kind of deal. So I feel like this gives me a lot more... Uh, I felt very constricted with what I could do with, with the original within that structure, and this not so much. I mean, I could foresee this this being something that I just continue to chip away at for a really long time. Um, it, you know, like, I, I kind of see this as, like, my dwarf fortress a little bit. Like, uh, you, you know, like, you could, you could potentially just keep adding, you know, stuff to this, or, or Cataclysm Dark Days Ahead or something like that, which is another, you know, game that's kind of like an open-world, procedurally generated kind of deal. Um, but it's I mean, the hope, the hope with this is that of sorts. It's oh, like sorry, what's that? Can, uh, those types of games are, are endless. You know, yeah. Can, I think you can play them forever, and also they can be, you know, edited, changed uh, throughout yeah. long periods of time. Yeah, and, and and the thing about those games, of, of course, is that they're they're you know hyper complex. And while you know I want Streets of Rogue Two to have this this you know great depth to, depth to it, uh, you know, it, it, I also want it to be the sort of thing that you can just kind of pick up and play, and you know not have to like read a wiki or something like that, mm -hmm. um, which is you know a, a big part of uh, of games like that, or at least these games that have been in development for like twenty years. And by the way, Streets of Rogue has been in development for about ten years at this point. Like started uh, late 2013, um, so 
I mean, the sequel really is like 10 years of development because it's sort of built off of what I did with, with the original game. Like, mm -hmm. there would have been no way to like go to like do this game as the first game because it would have taken me this much time. Um, really? You know, it had to, this game had to be on the back of, of, of that one or mm. else it just wouldn't be possible. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, this is a very, very long term project. And, uh, you know, I was talking with my artist the other day, like, yeah, could this go on for another 10 years? Maybe. I don't know. I mean, <laughs> So we should expect Streets of Rogue 64. Got it. <laughs> Can't wait. <laughs> 64. Oh, maybe when I'm, maybe, yeah, maybe my children's children's children uh, can can pick up the reins on, on oh, that Oh, I one. love that. The um, Streets of Legacy. Yeah. <laughs> What's your new name? <laughs> Pattern it. Right, Streets of Rogue. Yeah, right. Streets of, <laughs> Streets of Rogue Legacy, actually. Yeah, there's already a Rogue Legacy. That's right. But it is it the of Streets of. of. Mm-hmm. Yes, yes. <laughs> Like, I like this, I like this idea. Ah. Matt, do you have any specific advice for people who want to start developing games as a very experienced developer yourself? Sure. Yeah. Well, I mean, I would say I would say start start small, but you know, always be thinking about like what you what you you know ultimately want to do is like your your dream project. I I guess. I mean, everybody has like a dream project, and that's like the first thing they wanna they wanna work on. Um, but you know, if you don't have the skill set initially, I mean, it's going to be hard to actually pull that off. I mean, I'd say, yeah, just work, work on smaller projects. But but you know, as, as you're working on these things, you'll be sort of like developing your own code base and uh, you know methods of of doing things. And uh, you know, eventually, you'll have all these all these skills and and code and whatnot, and uh, uh, that you can you know use to to uh, eventually do the thing that you want to do. Um, you know, I mean, just starting out, I guess just, you know, keep your, keep your dreams, dream big, but keep your expectations for, for early on, you know, yeah. fa fairly, uh, much smaller, you know, cause, cause yeah, I mean, game, de game development takes a lot of time and also just, just recognize that, that, uh, to actually make like a finished, a finished game, like, like there's an expression that goes like the, the last ten percent is really the last ninety percent, or something like that, and that that really is true. I mean, the 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 real big hurdle for a lot of people is is uh, just getting across the finish line because to actually, you know, put the level of polish that you need to to release a real game um, is really really challenging. But I mean, if you can if you can get past that, even with a small game, um, I mean, that's that's a big deal because you know most people who get into game development don't even release you know anything, uh, even if it's a free thing or or whatever. Um, so, I mean, uh, just, uh, keep going, keep releasing, uh, keep finishing things and yeah. eventually you'll probably finish something that you're really proud of. Yeah. Like start off small, don't put anything, don't have all these big high expectations. If you're starting off, you know, just take it one step at a time. If it's unfinished, but people have fun, it doesn't matter. Like you need, you see so many games that are even like web browser games, for example, that just take off so well that don't need all these extensive things like the AAA games do, you know? Like start off small to get yourself there and carry on, you know? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, the, if, if, even if you if you release the like the person who released, uh, uh, well, I'm not saying every, everything is going to be well. He, I was thinking about Flappy Bird for some reason. I don't, I don't even know why. That, oh, that's yeah. such an anomaly, though. <laughs> that's such an anomaly. Such an anomaly. Uh, yeah, um, but uh, you know, the I, I, keep, don't, don't expect don't expect Flappy Bird levels of success immediately, but. Uh, uh, you know, I mean, a project like that is a, good, is a good one to start out to start out on. I mean, if you can like finish something like that that has like you know a title screen and and all that, and it's playable from beginning to end mm -hmm. and does what it's supposed to and is relatively bug free, uh, you know, that's a yeah. that's a good starting project right there. Yeah, you had it here, folks. That's how you do it. That's how you do it. Keep those passion high. Yeah. <laughs> um, before we finish up this wonderful interview it's been, first of all, it's been great to get to know you i think this is the first time we've actually had an interaction together and it's been wonderful to get to know you and meet you and i cannot wait to work with you in the future with everything um i'm very excited about that especially with everything that's going to be upcoming what are the three words that you would describe streets of rogue to you've only got three words but what would yeah, you i was thinking about this come on uh uh 
crazy accessible depth. That's what I came up with. I because, like, like that. Yeah, that should yeah. be the tagline. It's like, yeah. crazy, it's crazy game, but accessible, lots of depth there. Crazy accessible depth. That's what I'm gonna call. That's what I'm gonna use Actually, my words there. I like the accessible part. So crazy, obviously, right? Uh, depth, meaning that there's a lot of stuff in the game, but actually accessible. That yeah. for me is the most like the most exciting of the three mm -hmm. words. Yeah. Actually, you can actually access things and do them, right? Yeah, I mean that's always sort of been like my my one of my big uh, things I keep coming back to with with the Streets of Rogue since the the very beginning is that you know I always wanted to make it like. I mentioned this before, but just like very, very easy to pick up and play and, you know, get get started doing stuff in and not having to read a wiki. Um, you know, I mean, there's there's plenty of times during the development of the original where I, you know, I, I just took things out because I thought it was just like one level of like complexity higher for the player than it needed than it needed to be. Um and you know, there's a lot to a lot to chew on if you're really into if you're really into the systems in these games, mm -hmm. but to actually just just get doing things, uh, it, it's going to be really easy, is, is the is the hope. We need like to that. put that uh, on the Steam page now. Yeah, exactly. Crazy, accessible. <laughs> Gotta be on there. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, thank you so much for joining us today and taking the time to um, just speak with us. I really hope you had a lot of fun. Um, and yeah, me and George, we're just so excited to work with you in the future. And just for everybody that's going to be watching this and you know the, all the information the amazing information that you've given them um i'm really excited to see how the amazing community are gonna like find this video and interview and hopefully give them some nice like, little insight and in what to expect from streets of rage too yeah i'm sure that people are going to love it and you know uh, it's been a pleasure working with you and i'm excited for what's to come mm -hmm. and just thank you so much for joining us and yeah just, just thank you for a wonderful interview and uh, no. Good luck with uh, the development. Mm -hmm. Is there anything oh, else you want to add? Um, yeah, uh, yeah, just uh, get get psyched, man. Get, uh, get psyched. Get stoked for this, yeah. <laughs> uh, in the words of Wolfenstein 3D, get psyched. Uh, love it. Say, that's what they said at the beginning of every level. I loved, I loved that. It's like that was their cool. loading screen. Just get psyched. Um. Um, yeah, so <laughs> I love it. I'm psyched. I don't know about you, but I'm psyched. <laughs> awesome. So thank you so much for joining us today. And hopefully at some point in the future, um, once we progress more to Strix of Rogue 2, we can have like another interview or we'll see how what everyone can let us know and feedback in the comment section and everything like that. Can let us know if they wanna have the lovely Matt again. <laughs> Alrighty. Thanks, guys. Much appreciated. Bye. Thank you.